All right, so ladies and gentlemen, first of all, um, I want to tell you that I spent a long time reading algae labs yesterday. And um, I, want to, I want to give kudos to everybody who did their best on that very, very large summative assignment and turned it in and did the best that you could, okay? So good for you if you turned something in and you really tried. Um, there were some of you, though, that ha seemed to really struggle with some of that. If you are one of them, it's in CIS right now, you can go look. If you're a person who had a really difficult time with that and therefore got a grade lower than a 70, and many of you did, you may want to take a look. I put a lot of feedback into the Google Classroom, so you should have gotten lots of little messages from me telling you exactly why you got the grade that you did, okay? And uh, I also want to say that there were a few of you that didn't turn anything in at all <laughs> and have a zero for a 100-point summative lab right now, which might be taking you into the, uh, um, a very low grade for this quarter. And unless you repair it, uh, that's where it's going to stay. So uh, what I want to tell you is that I encourage you, because this is a science class and because science learning is all about trial and error, if you're a good scientist, you, you deal with making mistakes and then you correct them and that's how you learn. So if you got a really bad grade or you haven't done it yet, you still have an opportunity to go in, to repair your mistakes and to resubmit. So you can come to, you really, should, some of you should really come for help on that because you may, you had such conceptions in your work that it looks like you really need some help. And I, um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay, so that's why I'm, that's why I'm saying this, to, to calm your anxieties, all right? Because I don't want you to be anxious about this. I want you to, to later, not now, to go and, and face up to whatever, whatever happened on that lab and fix it. And I'm giving you a complete carte blanche to do that, okay? So what I told the last class is the same thing I'm going to tell you. Um, if you need help, repairing that lab or figuring it out, uh, the best times to come would be this Friday during Highlander time, nice long Highlander time on Friday, or mon Monday morning office hours, which start at 9 a.m. Um, and, and both of those are in this, this environment right here, BBCU, okay? Um, don't come tomorrow during Highlander time because that's your freshman meeting. If you're a freshman, you have a mandatory meeting tomorrow during your Highlander time. I wanted to make sure that you knew that, okay? I also want to make sure that you know um, that I am accepting resubmissions on this lab up until the end of the second quarter. I really care about this lab. I really care about you getting it right, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that, all right? So I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you to be nervous about it. I just want you to, to kind of have it on your back burner and say, oh, I'm going to go take care of that. I'm going to go and ask Mrs. Murdoch or Mr. Bouchard for help with that. I also want to make sure you know how much respect I have for students who come and ask me for help. I have a tremendous amount of fondness and respect for people who come and ask me for help. That shows great intelligence. So I want to encourage you to do that. Everybody comes sometimes for help and they're all apologizing, like, like, you know, like it's a bad thing to come ask for help. It's not. It's a good thing. It's my job to help, okay? So don't ever be shy about asking for help. Luke, it will be due, I mean, ultimately, uh, the, the end of the quarter is January 21st. Um, I would encourage you to do it way before then, but because um, if, you have a, if you have a low grade in there for that lab, it's a really big lab, it could be bringing your grade down. So, so try to repair it and get it done before the winter holiday. That would be the recommendation. Yeah, I would do that, um, but but you can have more time if you need it, okay? Okay, and congratulations to the people who turned it in and got a good grade. I'm really proud of you guys if you did that. It's called the Algae Lab, okay? And I will show you exactly where it is. You should have grade back for yesterday. It's already in CIS, okay? So let me show you exactly where it is, and then we're going to start um, talking about osmosis in just a minute here. So if you look, go. If when you're saying it's due January 21st, I wouldn't wait because no, I wouldn't because we won't have time to help you as much then 
because we yeah. pushed on other things that you won't mm -hmm. get a grade. I trust me. Don't leave this until the last minute. Very, no. very poor idea to do that. Okay. So this is the unit we're in right now, the cell transport. That lab was a while ago. It was due the middle of November. And it's way down here. Look at this graphing assessments. It's in this folder. And not only will you find the lab there, this is it right here. Okay. There it is. There is how I explained how to do it. And then here's the actual document. And there are some of you that didn't do it at all. It's a hundred point lab. You need to do it. Not only will you find that there, you'll find help on video of how to do it. And you'll also have, um, Look, look at this reasoning info for the group. I even filmed myself explaining things here that people didn't, didn't apparently look at because your reasoning sections weren't very good, frankly. Um, so that being said, that's where that is. Um, that's not what I want you to do right now. Okay. Right now we are going to be talking about osmosis. I don't want you to worry about this right now. I want you to put it on your back burner as okay. Mrs. Murdoch's giving me a second chance for this, but I'm going to do it later when I have time. All right. Right now, we are going to do, I'm going to do a lecture with you about osmosis. Now I want to say that this screen that I'm sharing has been glitched a bit this morning, and I don't want that to, to, to freak you out either. Okay. So if you see it kind of go rainbow colors or green, it should only last for a second and then it will come back, all right? So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just just keep on watching and looking and listening, okay? Yep. So, and Luke just said some of your other classes have had it in math and stuff. So perfectly fine. No, you, if you want to take notes, Aro, you can. Um, yes, you can. You, or you can just sit and listen. Listen and watch, but don't worry if it stretches for a little longer. About it comes back and forth, and we're working on it. We just got to deal the cards we're dealt right now. Okay. All right. So how osmosis works? Which way will the water move? Right? Because osmosis, by definition, is the movement of water from where it's hot. From get out there high to low concentrations, and you across a membrane. Okay, so it's just like diffusion, except it's specific for water. Water movement in and out of cells is such an important thing and happens so quickly in a lot of cells that um, that is a, it, it, by itself, it's actually a really good topic to look at. And it affects living cells so strongly that it's really winds up being a really important process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw three beakers my best to make them about the same size. There's one. And then there's another one. And then here's a last beaker. And in each beaker, there is water. And floating in the water in each beaker, we're going to draw a giant red blood cell. I know red blood cells are not this big, but I want to draw it nice and big to kind of illustrate what's going on with the water inside and outside of the red blood cell. Okay, so I've drawn three different situations with a red blood cell floating in it. And what I want to tell you is that this membrane right here, this membrane around each red blood cell. I'll just tell you the rules. Or the permeability of the red blood cell membrane in this situation 
water can go through, but sugar cannot. Okay. When you have a problem, a, a diffusion or osmosis problem, and you have to predict the direction of solute or water flow, each problem will tell you to begin with what the permeability rules are for the membrane in the problem. In this case, water can go through these membranes, but the sugar that I put in the solutions as the solutes cannot. So that's going to be an important thing whenever you have problems like this to make sure you know what the permeability rules are of the membrane. Because sometimes it's different. In this case, I'm being very clear. Water can go through, the sugar cannot. Now in the first picture, inside the cell is 0.3 molar sugar and outside is 0.8 molar sugar okay so if i were to draw little dots in the water those dots represent sugar molecules let's say maybe we're talking about table sugar like sucrose so out here the concentration of sucrose is pretty high. 0.8 molar is actually, that's a lot of sugar. So the concentration of sugar outside of this cell is higher than the concentration inside, <coughs> inside the cell, okay, there. Inside the cell, 0.3 molar, you know, there's some sugar in there, but not as much. All right, in the middle cell, the concentration inside the blood cell is still 0.3 molar. So there's some sugar in there. And then outside the cell, it's also 0.3 molar. So the concentration inside and outside, these little dots, represent the sugar molecules. And it's about the same inside and outside. In the last beaker, the concentration is still consistently 0.3 molar inside, but outside it's zero molar. There's no sugar out there at all. So there's some sugar molecules inside the cell, but nothing outside. Okay. So what I hope you'll notice is that in each of the beakers in this story, there's not just one solution. There are two. There are two solutions in this beaker over here. Let me put the arrow so it moves. Okay, so inside the cell, I hope you can see my arrow moving. That's a 0.3 molar solution of sucrose inside the red blood cell. On the other side of the membrane out here is a 0.8 molar sucrose solution that is different in its concentration from the one inside the cell. So two solutions here. Same with this middle beaker. Inside it's 0.3 molar concentration, outside it's 0.3 molar concentration. These are two different solutions separated by that membrane around the red blood cell. Same over here, two solutions. One outside the cell, which is just pure water, and one inside the cell that's 0.3 molar sucrose. We have a name that we can, we can use, an adjective to describe solutions based on their concentration. So this solution out here, because it's higher in concentration than the solution it's being compared to, we call that a hypertonic, hypertonic solution. So this solution out here, outside of the red blood cell, is hypertonic to the inside of that red blood cell. So we'll say hypertonic solutions have more solutes than the solution they are compared to, right? Okay, so a hypertonic solution has a more, higher, hyper means more, hyper means more, right? Okay, 
So that's the definition of a hypertonic solution. This solution here, the one that's outside of this red blood cell, is called an isotonic solution. Iso means same. And isotonic solutions have the same amount of solutes. As the solution it is compared to All right, last one. This solution out here that's outside of this red blood cell is called hypotonic. It is hypotonic. And hypo means less. Less. So hypotonic solutions have less solutes. than the solution they are compared to. Okay, now we've got a foundation here. Now we can go back and start talking about water flow. So water has a tendency to want to move, move around with the goal of reaching equilibrium. Lots of cell, cells in nature are always trying to reach equilibrium. And osmosis, or water flow, is one of the first things that's going to happen to achieve equilibrium. Equilibrium means that the concentration on both sides of a membrane is the same. Nature likes that situation. Nature is always moving water or solutes if it can, so that there is an equilibrium situation. It's just kind of the laws of physics. It's the way things work. So in terms of this beginning beaker here, right, this starting beaker right here, pull this down. Let's see if you can help me predict the direction of water flow. If you look at this situation, right, the black dots represent sugar molecules that can't move. The sugar can't move here. But the water, the white space between, is the water. Which way is it going to move? Is the water going to flow into the cell or out of the cell for this situation to reach equilibrium? This, this situation here, right? Will the water flow in or out to make it so the concentrations on both sides are equal? Here, I will need your help, Mr. Bouchard. I'm ready. Sorry, I was talking about the mic. Can on. you tell me what they're answering? Um, they're saying in, in. Oh, really? Are you sure about that? If the water moves in, you're going to dilute that internal uh, concentration of sugar even more. So it'll go down to 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and that will be very very different from the outside solution, which is still 0.8. Uh, Alex said out. Water to go in? Dylan said out. Somebody said out, yes. Well, obviously, because of my reaction, you would know that that would be the right <laughs> answer. And, yeah, yes. The water is moving. Remember, not the sugar. If the sugar could move, it would move in, right? But we're not talking about sugar. Osmosis is movement of water. So the water in this story, the water, right, H2O moves out because that way these dots out here are going to get more spread out and diluted and you're going to be able to go towards equilibrium. If more water comes out here, can you see how the 0.8 might go to 0.7 or 0.6, which is closer to 0.3, right? So the water... Every time you have a hypertonic solution, if you stick a cell in a, in a solution that's hypertonic to it, it will always dehydrate the cell. So water in hypertonic solutions will move out. Water 
leaves, leaves the cell. And what do you think the fate of the cell is? What will the cell start to look like as the water leaves it? Anybody put it in the chat or raise a hand? The cell will, how would you describe that? Let's see what they say. Waiting guys. Waiting. It's all right. Cell will, what will happen to the cell physically? What will it start to look like? Think about it. The water leaves. there. The water leaving, then the cell is. Somebody, come on. That would be a good description. Shrinking. Yes, Shrinking. the cell. Dehydrating. Dehydrating, beautiful. Both of those words are good. The cell will shrink and dehydrate because water is leaving it. That's bad news for living cells. So Cells do not like to lose water. Hypertonic solutions can kill cells. Um, one of the reasons why um, you have to be really, you have to have some special adaptations to live in, in water that's really, really salty. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Now let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about this one over here. Let's talk about the hypotonic solution, right? Now you've got nothing out here. This is all water and you've got some sugar inside. Now, which way is the water going to move this time to reach equilibrium? In some say, a bunch say now, in. Now it moves in. Very good. Now the water, the H2O, now the water will move in. Yes, osmosis will go in this direction. Good. Okay. And the reason that's happening is because there's sugar in here, right? And there's none out here. So you've got water moving in to spread those dots out even more to dilute the inside of the cell, right? To make it, to make it maybe go from 0.3 maybe to 0.2 molar sucrose because you're increasing the amount of solvent. Good. So in a hypotonic solution, water moves in, moves into cells. And what's the fate of the cell? What is the cell going to look like if a bunch of water is flowing into it? Let's see what they say. Come on, guys. Sorry, I was responding to another student's private chat. Uh -huh. Expand, get bigger. Oh, beautiful. Causes cells. It will get larger. It will explode. Yeah, they might. I like the word expand. That's a good word. To expand. And maybe... I'm not going to use the word explode because that's a little bit less biological. They might burst. How about that? They might burst or lice. Lice is the technical term for bursting. Okay. Right? So bad news. Hypotonic solutions, hypertonic solutions are both bad news for cells because one of them makes them dry up and the other one makes them swell up and burst. So the isotonic one in the middle so let me ask you this. Is the water going to move at all? Let's what do see. you think? Maybe from the seventh no. grade you might remove the answer. No, they said no. No okay. question. Beautiful. So there's no net movement. You're correct. No net water movement. But... Water will still move. Water moves equally this way and this way. There's even a special symbol for it. You see what I've drawn, right? So H2O is moving both ways equally. And that's something called dynamic equilibrium. Because equilibrium is already there. But that doesn't mean that things aren't still moving. It's dynamic. So the cell will stay the same shape. The cell is a happy cell. Right? Cell stays same shape, doesn't swell or shrink, and it's a happy cell. Right. Okay. So now, kind of begging the question here, 
which one of these solutions would you want in your IV bag at the hospital? If they hooked you up to an IV bag and that fluid was going into and mixing with your bloodstream. Isotonic. Yes, that's Isotonic. right. Okay. A bunch of them. Nice. Okay, so the best, this is the best solution for your IV bag, right? And in fact, inside an IV bag, there is a fluid called saline. If you've ever been to the hospital and seen a loved one that's getting an IV bag, what, if you look on the, on the bag and you look at the label, it will say that it is saline. And it has a certain percentage of, uh, of salt is what they put in it. And that percentage, that concentration of salt, is very, very tightly quality controlled. There are companies that fill these saline bags for hospitals, and they have to be very careful that there is the exact amount um, of solutes in that bag that matches the amount of solutes in the human bloodstream. Because if not, if you injected pure water, you know, a hypotonic solution into somebody's arm, what would happen to their red blood cells? Ooh. In the chat, we'll raise a hand. Burst. Yeah, you'd get some red blood cells that might start bursting. Now you've got like eight liters of blood in your body, so if you only got a little bit of pure water in there, it probably wouldn't do too much harm. But if you got too much, if if there were some bad bags that got into that hospital that were that were hypotonic to human blood, um, you could... same with the hypertonic solution. If you had an IV bag that was too salty, too much saline in there, you could start causing a human's, a person's, a patient's red blood cells to shrivel up, and that's that's bad too. Okay. Yep. Dylan just said saline looks like water. As a, it does, but it's very it different. It does, but but again, remember that with solutions, um, with solutions, when something's dissolved in water like when salt is dissolved in water or when sugar is dissolved in water, you can no longer see it with your naked eye. But if you somebody gives you a, a, um, a glass of water with a lot of sugar dissolved in it, you might not see the sugar, but if you tasted it, it would be there, wouldn't it, right? Or if somebody gave you a glass of salt water, you wouldn't be able to see the salt, but if you tasted it, you would taste the salt water, right? So solutes are not visible to the naked eye. Right, these dots that I drawn are were just for your benefit, so you could see um, how how the concentrations of the solutes were different. Right, I just drew the dots in as a visual aid for you, but in reality, you can't see sugar molecules if they're dissolved in water. They're all too 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 small, and they moved in between the water molecules, and they're not in crystal form anymore. Luke Excellent. asked Excellent. unless they're what. A, and then Luke, Luke just asked, unless they are not fully dissolved, right? And with, right, right. I mean, if you have, if you dumped a whole bunch of sugar into a, a glass of water and you stirred it for a while, there might be some crystals that just wouldn't get in there because you have a saturated solution, right? You know that solutions can be saturated. They could be so full of sugar molecules that the last bits of crystals can't get in there because there's no room, right? That can happen too. Yes. Um, but a sugar crystal is actually made of probably one well, single sugar crystal is like a, a million sucrose molecules in there. So interesting factoid. All right. All right, good. So that is my three beaker lecture. I will copy this and post it so that you can go get it later if you wanted to. But now you should have some idea of if you have different concentrations on either side of a membrane and you know the rules of diffusion across that membrane, you should be able to predict direction of water flow now. And you also should be able to give names, adjectives to the different solutions, right? Also remember that these terms, hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic, they can't be used by themselves. You can only call something hypotonic if you're comparing it to a different solution, right? That's on the other side of the membrane. So if this solution out here is hypotonic, what that means is the solution in here is hypotonic. Not to confuse you even worse, but 
right here in this picture, all I was doing was telling you what the outside solutions were called. So this is this outside solution is hypotonic to the inside of the cell. This outside solution is isotonic to the inside of that cell. And this outside solution here is hypertonic to the inside of that cell. And again, and that information can help you predict water flow. Yep. And again, please read over the rules of <laughs> movement when guys, because mm -hmm. they will always tell you rules when they give you a problem because they have to. Mm. So okay. pay attention to that. Sorry. Break time. That's all right. You're good. You're good. I'm going to show them the top of this worksheet now. You should you be able to see that. Do break first? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. All right. Get up, guys. Move around for a second. Miss Murdoch will play a lovely song. Um, Dylan, <laughs> next week. We'll talk about it in a second, buddy. But next week, move. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> Oh. Want to use the bathroom? Thank you. 